does artificial light on, on beaches affect some sensitive species? Uh, but that opens up a sort of preliminary question, which is how do you appropriately measure light for environmental impacts to uh, species? Dr. Longcorn and I started doing a research project on the national parks and light pollution. Over the summer, we talked about starting a project to measure light pollution from the ground and then connect those measurements to the satellite measurements. And so that led to some exploration of, of what other people had done around the world and exploring uh, different types of ways to quantify because uh, it isn't obvious that you would get a fisheye lens and a camera and point it straight up and take a picture and that you could get everything out of that which involves sending the camera to Slovenia uh, to the guy who has the software and will go out and calibrate the camera. Make sure it's taking accurate scientific measurements. So it's very cool to be able to like, use the camera as like a high-powered scientific measuring tool. It's, I've been taking personal pictures of stars for five or six years, but I never thought that we'd be using those similar pictures to measure the impact of light pollution on animals. Within LA County, there's approximately like 65 or 70 miles of sandy beaches, and those range from reasonably dark beaches in Malibu, where you can see the Milky Way, to like very light polluted beaches such as Santa Monica, completely covered with light. One of our first sites that we went to was at Dockweiler Beach because of the snowy plover roost site. So snowy plovers are an endangered species. It's suspected that they're sensitive to light pollution. We went to Catalina Island to measure a variety of beaches that were typically much darker than the mainland Los Angeles County beaches. So it was really cool to be able to go out to the Wrigley Institute and have a base that USC operates and just getting a sampling of the island and see how the light affects different aspects of the island. Yeah, I've got to say Ben has an artistic eye as well and so some of the pictures that he's taken not just straight up into the sky but you know of the, the horizon and whatnot you know, they're, they're art, and, and it's exciting to see because I know that these are things that we're going to be able to put in front of people to communicate about this issue. Light pollution is a unique form of pollution because it's very easy to fix just by turning off the lights, and you can often like save money by making more efficient lighting, and that benefits the environment as well. You could enormously change the conditions for a particular location by changing a few lights. Now, of course, Changing all of Los Angeles is another issue, and that's another part of the problem. And so I think this gives an opportunity to integrate the sort of physical and biological and spatial sciences in with the context where there's a lot of opportunity to be had uh, with the design community to do better uh, decision making and better design. There's a communications element of doing this that, that I think uh, should open people's minds a little bit about what we're talking about and why we're concerned and what we're doing.